Mubina on the weekend show. I'm Mubina Kapasi and we have a jam-packed show for you today. Well, let's tell you what are the stocks that we have lined up for you and what we are going to discuss on the show. Well, we are going to discuss Bata India as well as Manapuram Finance, a technical as well as a fundamental perspective. Later on the show, we'll be discussing Manjunath's portfolio with you. So let's bring on board our experts then to decode the markets and give us their top picks. On the fundamentals, we have with us Avinash Gorakshekar, the head of research at Joiner Capital, joining us now. And on the technicals, we have with us Richard Jen. He's the technical analyst of equities at Angel Broking. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to Buy Now, Sell Now Weekend. And let's get on first with our queries for today. Now, we have an email query coming in from Hari Varija Kishan, who is a regular viewer, in fact, and he's calling us all the way from Abu Dhabi. He says he has bought 350 shares of Bata India at an average price of 570 rupees per share, which was about a year ago. And he wants to know whether it is worth holding further or should he switch to some other stocks? Well, it's an interesting query, really. And Bata India is a stock that, despite demonetization, has been able to post a decently good set of numbers in quarter three. Avinash, let's dissect the fundamentals of Bata India. Then, do you think that, despite the weakness in numbers that we have been seeing since the last couple of quarters prior to demonetization, Bata India is a good hold? Yeah, I think uh, he can hold on to Bata India. I think Q3 numbers were slightly disappointing, especially on the EBITDA front. And I think the company did mention that demonetization did impact its uh, you know margins uh, clearly in the November-December period. But I think if you look at the year FY18, I think uh, the company has already announced some new product launches. And our sense is that you know if he can hold on for the next 12-15 months, he could definitely get a good uh, risk reward ratio. Our sense is that you know he should use the current weakness to actually average the stock at around 500. Four rupees and uh, probably reduce his cost price. He could look at a target price of around six hundred over the next twelve fifteen months. Okay, a thumbs up really coming in from Avinash on the fundamentals for Bata India. But on the technicals, you know, if you'll pull up the last couple of days charts, in the last five days, the stock hasn't really done, man, done much. And even if you look at it from a slightly longer term perspective, in the last one year, once again, the stock has been more or less flat. Um, Richard, given the fact that our investor here has a long term perspective, how does Bata India look on the charts? Yes, I would focus more on the weekly charts uh, you know, since he is a long term investor. Now what we have seen after the recent corrective move in last few weeks, uh, prices have taken uh, support near a 400 level which seems to be a very good support level. If you observe even on the monthly charts, the 89 EMA on the monthly charts which is usually act, uh, which usually acts as a long term support, prices have taken uh, support near the 89 EMA on the daily charts, uh, monthly charts and given a pullback uh, from those levels. Uh, on the daily charts, the prices are consolidating since last couple of weeks. So whereas in short term, the stock might continue to consolidate in the range of 460 to 500 range but given his time uh, but given the long term horizon I think he should continue to hold on once this resistance of 500 510 is taken out then the stock has potential to go a very good to show a very good upside momentum in the coming one year uh, probably we can see levels of around 600 610 which is the resistance which has uh, from since March 2015 itself so I think uh, from at least six to months uh, eight months of perspective we should continue to hold the stock and expect target around 600 to 6 610. All right, that's a thumbs up coming in on the fundamentals as well as technicals for Bata India. So let's move on and get on board our next query, and it's coming in from Ratan. He's uh, in fact emailing us from Japan, all the way from Japan, and he has sent in his query. He says he has bought uh, 1,000 shares of Manapuram Finance at 90 rupees per share in September and he wants to know whether he should sell now or hold on for further gains. Well, we're happy to help you with your query. This is exactly the right space where you have emailed us and let's run you through exactly the financials of Manapuram Finance. Well, interestingly, it has been able to post a very good set of quarter three numbers. Of course, the NPS have risen a bit, which was a bit discom discomforting, but yes, NI growth was strong, net profits as well, um, you know, managed to surge. Avinash, on the fundamentals for Manapuram Finance at 90 rupees he's purchased it what's your take no, I think uh, as you rightly mentioned you know the Q3 numbers were very strong especially on the NI front and the loan book front and despite the demonetization impact I think the company seems to have done very well our sense is that uh, clearly over the next uh, three to four quarters the management seems to be very confident over the kind of uh, growth disbursements in FY18 our sense is that if he can hold on for the next 12 months he could get a decent risk reward ratio his uh, buying price is more or less uh, you know close to the market price so I would presume that he should 
could hold on for the next 12 months for a target price of around 130, 140. And I think uh, probably next uh, 12 to 15 months, the gold loan business could actually mature and actually give him a better return. Okay, um, once again, you know, Avinash likes fundamentals of Manapuram Finance, seeing how their loan uh, business is growing, the gold finance business is growing. But Richard, on, te on the technicals, you know, Manapuram Finance has had quite a run, really. Um, the stock has seen quite an up move when you look at it from a three month or a six month or even a year to date perspective. Do you think that there's more up move? Probably at least not in short term because if you see then around 105, 108 zone, there's a very strong resistance coming in for the stock. During the November month of November 2016, the prices resisted around 105 and then it corrected up to almost up to 60 levels. And even if you observe the volumes during that correction, at least during the initial part of that correct, uh, corrective move, the volumes are very high. So considering this uh, strong resistance and prices have already rallied again way back from 60 to 105, I think some sort of profit booking uh, may be coming in the stock at least in near term. Uh, so I would uh, advise him to uh, you know, exit from this stock uh, even at current levels. Probably maybe anytime in the near future if the stock again dips to around 80 odd zone which is a very strong support for the stock, he can look to re-enter into the stock around 80 which is about 15% downside uh, from uh, Thursday's closing. On the other hand, uh, uh, apart from this, uh, instead of uh, Manapuram Finance, what I would uh, even recommend him to is to go, uh, is, is to go and buy PTC India. This stock on the long term charts has given a good breakout of the falling trend line resistances. Even the volumes during the breakout are high and the momentum readings on the long term charts are indicating a probability of, the, of a positive momentum at least in next 3 to 6 months. We are expecting a target around 106 uh, in short term. So PTC India you know, gives a better risk reward ratio than Manapuram Finance at current levels. Uh, probably would advise him to exit from Manapuram Finance now and, uh, and go along in the PTC India at current levels. All right, that's the advice coming in. I hope you've been able to take note of all of those queries and we've been able to answer them for you. Let's slip into a short break. When we come back, we'll be discussing Manjanath's portfolio. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. This is Buy Now, Sell Now Weekend and it's time to bring on board our portfolio segment. Today we'll be discussing Manjunath's portfolio. Let's tell you a bit about our investor. Well, he's 32 years of age. He is currently employed and based in Bengaluru and he is a long-term investor. So here are some of the stocks that are in his portfolio. And well, it's a mix of mid and small cap names, really no large cap companies that he owns currently. But yes, there's Kiwi Dice, 500 shares of that one purchased at 330 rupees. Lycos Internet, once again, a small cap company, which he's purchased at about 10 odd rupees. Bodal Chem 300 shares of that stock purchased at 127 rupees. Moving on, there's Omkar Specialty from the specialty chemical space at 175. <laughs> Arrow Textiles, 1,000 shares of that stock purchased at 44 and a half rupees per share. And Tanla Solutions, 500 shares at 37.85 rupees. From the oil and gas, gas space, it's Chennai Petro, 50 shares purchased at 278. Asahi Song, 100 shares at 246. And lastly, JBM Auto at 248.75, 100 shares purchased of that stock. Well, as you can see, a lot of small and mid-cap names really that are finding a place in his portfolio. So let's bring on board Avinash Gorakshekar to really slice and dice this portfolio down and exactly recommend all of the chops and changes. So Avinash, let's go through the first three stocks. There's Kiri Dice at 330 rupees. A small cap company like Cost Internet, which he's bought 3,500 shares of, and Bodal Chemicals. What do you make of these three stocks? No, I think uh, as far as Kiri dies, I think he can hold on. Uh, I would suggest that he can even average at the current level and uh, probably if he can hold on for the next 12 to 15 months, uh, he could get a target price of around 360, 370. Uh, as far as Lycos Internet, uh, I would presume that you know this is a company which is based in Hyderabad and uh, actually numbers uh, are not all that encouraging. We would suggest him an exit and uh, we would tell him to actually get into a frontline metal company that is sale. Uh, we believe that the metal cycle is getting positive and probably if he can get into sale at the current level, he could get a good target price of around 72. Uh, and Bodal Chemicals is a specialty chemical company. I would suggest that uh, you know he's gotten at a good price. Probably if he can hold on for the next 12 to 15 months, he could look at a target price of around 170. 
Okay, Kiwi Dice is a hold like us internet. However, that company, you may exit that, that stock and look for uh, investing your funds in a metal company like Sale, for example, which has actually run up quite a bit in the last couple of sessions. And Bodal Chemicals as well. Well, kudos to the entry price of about 127 rupees. It's a hold call from Avinash. Moving on, the next three stocks. Once again, small cap companies. Omkar Specialty at 175. Um, what do you make of the entire specialty chemical space? Arrow Textiles, do you like the fundamentals of the stock? And lastly, the stock Tanla Solutions at 37.85. Avinash, what's your sense on these three stocks? No, I think uh, Omkar Speciality also he can hold on. I think this is a speciality company which caters to the pharma uh, sector and I think uh, the company has done remarkably well in the quarter 3 of FY17. Uh, here I suggest he should hold on. He could get a target price of 210. So, holding on would make better sense here. As far as Arrow Textiles is concerned, I would suggest him an exit. This is a small cap textile company. I think uh, if he wants to remain invested in textiles, he should invest in a frontline uh, textile name like Arvind. Our suggestion is that uh, he could buy at the current level for a target price of around 415. And clearly, uh, you know, uh, from the... Uh, uh, the third uh, stock, Tanla Solutions. I would say that this is a company which is now going to benefit from the demonetization kind of impact because clearly they are a large player in the mobile, uh, you know, internet kind of solutions. Here he could look at a target price of around 70. He's already in the profit, but probably if he can wait for the next 6 to 12 months, he could get a better risk reward ratio. Okay, a thumbs up on Omkar specialty. Um, Arrow Textiles, of course, could uh, be looked at. You know, you could like, look at selling out on that stock and, in fact, look for a more mainstream textile company like Arvind. In fact, Avinash is looking out for targets of 450 rupees. So, lots of money that can be made over there. And lastly, Tanla Solutions is a hold as it would benefit from government's drive of demonetization. And the next three stocks in his portfolio from the oil and gas space, Chennai Petro, probably the only mid cap company. Really in his portfolio. Asahi Songwon at 246 and JBM Auto at 248. Avinash, your take on these three? No, I think uh, Chennai Petro definitely uh, qualifies to be a hold. It's a subsidiary of Indian Oil Corporation and has been doing remarkably well. I think he should hold on. Uh, year possibly uh, uh, another 15-20% upside can be expected. As far as the other two stocks are concerned, uh, I would say that JBM Auto definitely qualifies as a hold. It's a large vendor to Tata Motors as well as uh, the two-wheeler kind of sector and here also he could get a target price of around 320. As far as Asahi Songhao is concerned, this is also a pigment and a dye company and here also I think he's already in the profit. I would say that he should hold on for a target price of around 290 here. Okay, all of these three stocks get a thumbs up from Avinash, Chennai Petro, Asahi Songwon as well as JPM Auto. Do watch out for all of those targets that Avinash has mentioned. But do remember that this is only a model portfolio and please do consult your individual investment advisor before taking any investment decisions. Let's look into a short break. When we come, ba come back, we'll be giving you some technical as well as fundamental ideas on how you can have a profitable investment day. Welcome back. This is Bayana Selna Weekend and let's focus in on the markets because boy, that is something that has of course garnered all the attention. It was a one-way street really for the Nifty in the last four days of the trading week. Well, we ended in the green for every day of the week. So it was essentially the sixth consecutive day of gains. And not only that, even if you look at it week-wise, well, it was the fifth consecutive week of net gains that the markets were able to clock in. What were the top gainers? Well, it was Idea, Hindalco, as well as Axis Bank and Reliance Industries that actually led the charge for the nifty gains bharti infratel ntpc was some of the lagards mid cap index as well well that was in focus it was able to make a fresh lifetime high but of course in the last couple uh, last two trading sessions it did manage to lose some steam but let's get in a, an expert view really on the markets and see what exactly is the way forward for the markets and avinash 9000 or maybe a lifetime high on the cards yeah, I think in the short term, uh, Avina, this definitely looks very much possible. And I think the very fact that uh, this expiry we have held on to 8900 is very important. I think uh, to a large extent, you know, uh, stocks like Reliance and Idea and Bharti, I think have actually helped the move come in uh, very fast. And I would suggest that now the market should be looking at coming week at what could be the kind of election numbers which would be coming out from the coming uh, UP elections. But overall, I would believe that 8850 to 8900 would be a level where the markets would consolidate. And I think... Uh, uh, later on, I think uh, events as they unfold would definitely give a more of a directional call. But otherwise, the markets definitely seem to be an up move with a good amount of liquidity coming in from the local institutions. 
Oh yes, in fact, all eyes are on the UP elections and, and in whose favor does uh, that election actually come out in, the results do come out in. That is something that's going to give a lot of direction to the market as well. And of course, liquidity, like Avinash was pointing out, is something that is, of course, in abundance in the markets at this point of time. So yes, positive on the markets, at least on a fundamental basis. But Richard, coming then on the markets, we are seeing five consecutive weeks of net gains coming in on the Nifty. What's your sense? I think still on the prices front there are no signs of reversal if you observe even the last uh, entire last week itself although uh, the markets last couple of days traded in a narrow range but the stock specific momentum was quite positive. The moving set of moving averages are also positively placed and with no signs of reversal I think uh, I know it's quite soon early in the next week itself I won't be surprised if market rallies towards its all time high and, and, and crosses the previous high of 9119. So one should not look for any kind of reversal as of now until prices show them. Yes, the momentum readings are overbought, uh, but you know, usually in a very strong trended move, the momentum readings tend to stay in the overbought, uh, overbought zone for a quite long period of time. So I'm not expecting any any kind of uh, you know price correction as of now. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, in next uh, two three trading sessions itself, I think we should see an all time high and this uh, previous size of nine double one nine should be crossed. Oh yes, and we're just a couple of points away really from touching that coveted 9119 figure. So yes, no surprises. That's what Richard says if the Nifty does manage to make that all time high. But you know, Avinash, I just want to come to you on the telecom space because that's one uh, space that has actually been in the news quite a bit, of course, ever since Geo's entry. So be it the idea of Vodafone merger, be it of course, Bharati purchasing Telenor to really take on that combined entity. What would be your picking order when it comes to telecom stocks? No, I think clearly uh, within the telecom stocks, I think you know now uh, on the 24th or 25th, uh, possibly we would be getting the final details of the idea of Vodafone merger. So, uh, clearly, I think Reliance seems to be on the top of the pack because the kind of pricing they have announced uh, recently clearly makes them have a better edge over their competitors. And uh, mind you, you know they are sitting on a huge cash kitty, unlike most of the telecom players which are actually leveraged significantly. So, I would believe that you know Reliance definitely has a lot of steam left, and the geo business is something which the markets are looking forward that possibly unlike uh, FY19 where the break even was expected I think the break even could come in a little earlier so Reliance definitely uh, if it corrects and uh, if it does uh, come down to levels of around 1100 1150 could be a good buy on declines but I think idea could also be a good uh, kind of buy provided you know we get the contours of the merger which should be out probably in the coming week. Alright, that's uh, a synopsis on exactly which telecom stocks do look interesting to buy in on. Richard, on the technicals, I just wanted to understand Reliance Industries because, you know, on Thursday's move or rather on Wednesday's move, it was Reliance Industries that took Nifty past the 8900 mark and, and really, you know, did wonders on the markets. What's your sense? Do you think that there's more room for up move in Reliance Industries? Yes, definitely. In terms of the uh, in, in terms of the chart structure, if you if you observe, then the price have given a breakout from a very long term resistance of around 1140, 1150, which was the resistance of last uh, I think six or eight years. So probably usually, uh, even if we compare the volumes along with this breakout, then the volumes are very high. So which uh, which uh, definitely indicates that uh, this is the start of a new uptrend in this stock. Probably on the wave front also, if you observe the weekly charts, then this probability that uh, the low of the 11th of uh, on the low during the second week of November 2016 you know from that low uh, uh, we have done with the first and the second wave and this is the third wave which is going on which is uh, generally the most powerful wave in an impulsive uptre uptrend so any declines towards 1150 1140 range would be should be used as a buying opportunity I don't I won't be surprised if uh, very soon the prices resume the up uptrend and show a move higher up to 1300 1340 levels all right, that's the view coming in on Reliance Industries and of course on the markets as well. Clearly, both of our experts do seem to indicate that there may be some more room and steam left for the market to move upwards. But what are the stocks that really one should be betting on and take advantage of this kind of upswing in trade? Avinash, take us through some wealth creation ideas for investors who have more than a one year time horizon. Yeah, Mavina, we like two stocks. The first is uh, a company called Phenolix Industries. We believe that uh, this is the India's largest uh, PVC pipe manufacturing company and it has a backward integration model uh, since it also uh, makes in-house PVC resin. 
company has performed exceedingly well in the year financial year FY16 and our sense is that FY17 has also started on a very strong note. In fact, Q3 numbers were quite strong despite uh, a very challenging quarter since uh, demonetization came in in the month of November. But I think clearly if you look at the kind of business model they are into and the kind of benefits which have come in the union budget, especially for affordable housing and for irrigation, our sense is that earnings are likely to show a very strong traction in FY18 and more importantly, you know, important parameters like return on equity, return on capital employed have been very strong uh, for Finelix and most importantly it's a very low leveraged company I think hardly about 150 odd crores so going forward in the next one year we expect a target price over on 622 year. Uh, the second stock we would like is a company called Sterling Tools. This is an auto component company uh, and we believe that uh, it's one of the top vendors in the fastener space uh, and uh, is uh, doing exceedingly well business with most of the larger vendors like Maruti, Honda and the two-wheeler companies. Uh, it's also putting up a new plant in Haryana and our sense is that earnings growth coupled with the fact that uh, a very strong kind of EBITDA margin expansion is expected in the next 12 months. So here also investors can buy the stock at the current level. Uh, we have a target price of around 2 40 years. Okay, Finelax Industries and Sterling Tools are two well creation ideas coming in from Avinash. But Richard, you know, you did talk about the Nifty probably touching a lifetime high. What do you think investors can really or rather traders can look at to have a profitable trading uh, next couple of sessions? What are some technical picks that you have identified? A couple of stocks that I would recommend, one is from the large cap front and one is from the mid cap idea. Uh, amongst the large cap, we believe that uh, for the next leg of UPMU, Larsen and Tubro could be one of the stock which would outperform the broader indices. Uh, this stock has uh, started forming high top, high bottom for, uh, formation from the recent lows. Last couple of weeks, the prices have consolidated in a, in a narrow range, but as of now, it seems that this consolidation phase is a breather or is a time-wise correction uh, rather than price correction within an uptrend. Uh, the volumes and the momentum readings are indicating a prob higher probability of resumption of the uh, resumption of the uptrend so we can see a good amount of up move in this next leg of uh, up move in the nifty in larsen and tubro so one can look to go long in larsen and tubro around uh, around thursday's closing uh, with a stop loss below 1425 and expecting target around 1650 in next uh, in uh, probably next one month and my second pick would be from the mid cap front which is dish tv uh, if we observe the positional charts of the Dish TV, the prices had consolidated in a range for about three months, and during uh, and during this week, the stock has given a breakout of that consolidation. Now, one should also keenly observe the RSI readings in Dish TV. From August 2016 itself, levels around 60 was acting as a as a resistance in RSI of Dish TV whenever prices had given a pullback moves. Now during the last week along with the prices, the RSA has also given a breakout above 60 which was a resistance from last 6 months. The volumes during the breakout are also high which is indicating that we are in a short term uptrend in Dish TV. On th Thursday's trading session during last half an hour, uh, you know, some uh, sort of correction was seen in the prices I think uh, which provides a good buying opportunity and also a good risk reward ratio uh, from a very short term trading perspective. One should go long with keeping a stop loss below 86, expecting target around 103 and both the calls are from short term perspective up for a period up to one month. Okay, Dish TV as well as LNT are two stocks that look good to Richard on the technicals. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, for joining us on the show, answering all of our viewer queries, and of course, giving us your top picks. And well, with that, we'll have to wrap it up in this edition of Buy and Sell Now Weekend. Thank you for watching and have a lovely weekend.